Let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. Bless, we beseech thee, all who, following in his steps, give themselves to the service of others, that with wisdom, patience, and courage, they may minister in his name to the suffering, the friendless, and the needy. For the love of him who laid down his life for us, the same thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it in the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around him. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So welcome on this Monday, Thursday to my family's dinner table. This table is actually an antique um, made by an Amish carpenter in a small town that I grew up in, Walkettville, Indiana. I have been sitting around this dinner table since I was five years old. This dinner table has seen and heard a lot of things. It has heard conversations of happiness and liveliness. It has heard conversations of sadness and anger and frustration. And it has been here, as people say, up around it in silence, not knowing what to say to the other, not knowing how to reach out to the other, and sometimes sitting in silence just for refuge after a busy and loud day. At this dinner table, we have ordinary dinners every night. And in the gospel we just heard, we have another ordinary dinner. Now I know most of us think, oh, it was the Last Supper. It was the Passover, the Seder meal. But in John's Gospel, unlike Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we are not at the Passover yet. This is actually before the Passover. So it was indeed just an ordinary meal. And I am interested in how Jesus approached the dinner that night. It tells us in Scripture that he came to the table that night knowing that God had already given him all things, which mean he had all power, all authority, all knowledge. In fact, he already knew that he was going to die. He knew that Judas was going to betray him. Now, I don't know about you, but I have seen people come to the dinner table before who have a lot of power, authority, and knowledge, and I have seen them abuse that authority, power, and knowledge. We see in movies, and maybe we have seen in our own families, when somebody comes to the dinner table and they're mad. The food is not warm enough. The children are not well behaved enough. Things are not the way they should be for that perfect meal. And their frustration and their anger leaks over 
so that the others at the table are fearful, afraid, and sad. And Jesus had a lot to be fearful of on this evening. He had reasons to be sad. He knew he had been betrayed. And he knew another sitting at the table would deny him. And yet Jesus doesn't come to the table with that type of power and authority and knowledge. Rather, he sits or reclines actually at the table with his 12 disciples and he looks at them. And when he looks at them, he sees those whom he would love and love until the end. And in the Greek, to love them to the end doesn't mean the end of the time or the end of his earthly ministry, but it means to love them to the utmost. He fully loved this ragtag, broken, and sinful group. And instead of bringing his anger to them and saying, Judas, you are going to stay next to me for the next day. I'm watching you, boy. You will not betray me. I will not allow it. Or instead of turning to Peter and saying, oh, you think you are so wise? You think you are such a great follower? Well, you're not. And I'm going to teach you a lesson. And instead of looking at the 12 disciples and saying, why did you show up so filthy? Am I not your teacher and Lord? Could you not at least clean up for me? No, Jesus looks at those around the table and he looks at them with such love and understanding built from this relationship of love that he had with him that what he decides to do instead is to serve them. He decides to kneel at their feet and to wash them. And as he does so. He shows us what godly, humble, loving service looks like. You know, there's a difference between service and godly service. Service tends to be something that we do for another person who is in need, and it makes us feel good at the time but it does nothing to change the other person's circumstances. Godly love, on the other hand, participates in God's mission of healing and restoration and reconciliation. It is a service that mirrors what God did for God's people through the Exodus. And if you remember in that story of the Exodus, God hears the cries of the Israelites. And God joins them in their cries and their afflictions and their suffering. And God frees them from their oppression. And so on this night, when Jesus is looking at his disciples, he knows that as he washes their feet, what they need more than anything is to be cleansed and to be healed, hoping that they will remember in the hours and in the day ahead that that one act shows how much he loves them and is something that they can carry over after his death to know that he still loved them.
we are spending a lot of time together around our dinner tables these days. And I'm sure, just as I talked about earlier, there's much happiness around these dinner tables. There's loneliness for some of us around our dinner table. And sometimes there's anger and frustration from the day that has passed. Monday, Thursday reminds us that we are people grafted into God's mission, a people grafted to be in relationship with others. And even when we ourselves feel hurt, feel angry, and feel betrayed, that with God's help, we can sacrifice those feelings, we can lay them aside, and still choose to love the other, to reach out and understand where they're at, and to help their needs be met. And when we learn how to love each other as God has already loved us, that can extend not only from our dinner tables, but out into our community and out into our world. Because God does work through us and gives us the power to emulate Jesus' loving service to reconcile and heal this world. Have a blessed Monday, Thursday.